Hi, Jeff Spira here. If this is your first time here, I'm happy to have you. And uh, if not, if you're coming back to see one of my videos, welcome back. I'm the uh, main boat designer at Spira International. It's my business. I started it in the 1990s and uh, been selling plans on the internet since then. Anyway, let me tell you about a customer of mine. His name is Ken Waters. Here's a picture of him. He lives in Florida. I, I think he lives down near the uh, Florida Keys. Um, I, that's the way, that's kind of the way the pictures look anyway. So um, he's built a number of my boats. The first one was a, a was called, a, uh, is an Extapa, which is a 23 foot panga. And, um, and he, he built it using the traditional uh, methods of, um, of uh, timber framing and, uh, and ply covering and then fiberglass over top. And it's all bonded together in my own kind of unique way of, of designing boats so that they're extra tough. Um, and uh, it's a unibody sort of construction or monocoque if you are familiar with airplanes. So. Anyway, um, and he um, he uses uh, this used this extapa for uh, cruising in, uh, in onshore waters and also fishing in the in the Gulf. He sent me some pictures of some of the fish he caught. You know, he did did a nice job there. So down in the Keys. So um, and he built a second boat, and the second boat was a larger version of the Panga. Um, Panga is a deep V sort of easy to build heavy load carrying um, offshore cruiser um, and uh, they uh, anyway I have a line of them and they go from I think 12 feet up to I think the Manzanillo is the biggest at 26 feet so um, anyway he built this Manzanillo and here he is fishing in the Keys with his friends and family so um, and he built it using the standard wood framing, but instead of using the plywood covering, he used uh, pl uh, foam boards uh, to cover the, the outside and then fiberglass that over. Um, and uh, he used foam, yeah, the foam panels there. And he said it wasn't difficult to assemble, but it was more expensive than using the plywood. So this is not, it's not a cheap way to do it. So. Um, and he had to, he, you also have to uh, fill it and fiberglass the inside after you glass the outside. After you flip it over, you've got to turn around and do the inside of the foam. Uh, so it's, it takes twice as much fiberglass and, and uh, epoxy as it would if you were just doing a, a plywood boat. So it's, it's a lot more expensive to build and, and it's a lot more time consuming using the foam. Um, now it makes the boat lighter. I'm not sure what a lighter boat is good for, other than maybe it'll go a little bit faster with the same motor. But uh, you know, I'm from the old school where we like heavy boats, and you know, all the sailors out there listening to me probably are nodding their heads up and down. They like their boats kind of heavy too. Um, it's not. It's not. There's no. There's no advantage in in making an ocean boat lighter. It doesn't. It just bounces around more, and it. It acts as a bigger sail, you know, when the wind blows. So, so I, I don't, I don't see any real advantage to it. But, but if you want to, you know, it's easier to tow, for instance, and, and it probably has some rot resistance. If you don't want to take care of the inside, or you live in a really humid environment. I live in California, so it's very unusual for the humidity to get higher than you know. I mean, it's a desert here, really. So. Um, so it, it is really not necessary to, to build any extra, you know, protection in there for the for hulls. So anyway, um, and then he, uh, you know, he got on the, uh, uh, after he finished this Manzanillo and, and had a good time fishing with it, he got on email with me and we chatted for a while and he wanted to build a, uh, a boat that maybe could be taken for the Great Loop, which of course is, um, you know, uh, down the Mississippi, around the coast of Florida, and up the East Coast, and usually from the in, the uh, intra intracoastal waterway, uh, and uh, and then up through the canals, and 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 either through the canals of Canada or through the Great Lakes. Most guys prefer to do the canals of Canada because that's uh, a lot. That's real interesting and fun and all that, and then. Uh, and then through the uh, Lake Michigan, and then through downtown Chicago, and then back into uh, 
into eventually into the Mississippi River. So that's the great loop. And, and, and you know, a lot of people do it these days. There's a lot of groups around that do it and stuff like that. Uh, and it takes a it, it takes a boat that you can live on, you know, so it needs a, you know, it needs more than more than elementary camping space on it. It's not just an overnight thing. It's something you have to spend a long time on. Guys do it in 90 days and stuff, but uh, but the right way to do it, I think, is the, if it were me doing it, I'd take a whole year. Anyway, so uh, we we scaled up one of my designs. It's called the Garby Dory, and it has a, it has kind of a flat bow, but it has a it has a dory shaped a Pacific Power dory shaped bottom, so that it'll handle you know offshore, you know, handle rough water and that kind of thing. Uh, but it has a uh, it has a wide bow, so it's got a lot of stability and and uh, you know can support a, a deck and a cabin and that kind of thing. And uh, and so we scaled up my um, my uh, why the I have a it comes in a bunch of sizes again 12, 14, uh, 16, 19, 23. And we scaled one up to 27. So it, it's still trailerable. It's uh, under eight foot six wide. And, it's, and I call it the Mobile, as in Mobile, Alabama. So I used to spend a lot of time down there working. So I know about the water down there, the rivers and the lakes and the and the, uh, uh, the big bays and in, in the coastal waterways and stuff like that. So anyway, um, so we talked about it and, uh, and I ended up uh, redesigning the hull and, and up to a 27. And I mean, he I sent him the original uh, prints and he uh, he decided to build his. Now he used um, he used uh, foam boards just like um, he did in the uh, in the Manzanillo Panga, uh, but he uh, he also used foam boards for the for the framing as well. He didn't use wood boards; he used foam. So it was all foam on the inside. So again, costs a lot more to make than than wood and. Uh, and uh, is more complex and costs, you know, there's a lot more fiberglass work involved in it and all that. So, but anyway, here's a, here's a picture of him uh, as he is pretty much got the hull complete from a, from a structure point of view. Now he still has to do the glassing, but uh, have a look at this video and I think you'll be really surprised. <laughs> Okay, um, now there are some advantages to this. Uh, again, I, as I mentioned, it's lighter, you know, uh, so that that works, um, and it'll go it'll go faster with the same power. So, so anyway, he, he then took it and of course glassed it up and finished it off and uh, built his deck on on top. And uh, um, this is what it looks like when it's done. Um, you know, he wanted he wanted the inside so he could carry some of his friends around. And um, he built this uh, um, this this drop bow on it, which is like a landing craft bow uh, that'll drop down and, and, you know, you can load up, walk onto it uh, much easier. You don't have to climb over the sides. And um, and uh, this is an option on almost all of my uh, Garby Dories from the 16 up to the 27 footer. So um, uh, it'll you, a lot of them built on the Galveston, the 19 footer, and then uh, uh, the, the of course the 23 and, and the and the some on the Y River. So um, it was originally designed uh, on the uh, on the 19 foot Galveston for for someone in a wheelchair, so they could get on and off the boat. And they built a they built a, a you know really nice looking uh, uh, 19 footer and. Uh, for for you know be able to uh, you know be able to take the wheelchair up up and off on it and uh, work it on the boat. So I don't know if uh, I'm not sure if it was for the guy who built it or for his for his spouse I think, but I'm not sure. But um, but anyway, it's a it's a nice uh, thing to add. And uh, and Ken did a really nice job on his. He put his he put his uh, you know a decal of his kids on it. You know that's actually a painted onto the onto the drop bow so um 
Now it's it's pretty useful. You can use it as a as a uh, you know walk aboard or a, a wheelchair or so, you know someone with limited uh, access that uh, that needs to get on it. You know, there's been people that have built them for for their handicapped uh, members of the family and things like that. Um, you could also you put a small ATV on it or a motorcycle, a scooter, something like that. Uh, you could bring it aboard. Which I would do if we were if I were doing the uh, Great Loop with it, you know, and have a uh, have some sort of uh, some sort of vehicle that you can get around on, go to the store or whatever, you know, explore the explore the towns that you're stopping in. That that would be uh, fun and interesting. But uh, um, anyway, um, so here's uh, here's Ken uh, with his boat out on the water. Um, and he's actually has the door drop down to, uh, to level before it's, uh, you know, so it's, it's more like a little porch out in front of the, the hull. So have a look and see how it looks. Okay, well, um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, Ken's boat. Um, you know, I think if you wanted to do the, uh, the loop, you could outfit the inside. Like um, if, you, if you Google van life, uh, you can find all these people that are living in vans and they have, they have developed some really great galleys and heads and, and uh, solar powered uh, uh, features and, and you know some of these some of these vans are just really elegant. And you could do that in this boat, build build the same sort of you know simple uh, water systems and stuff like that. There's a million there's a million videos on this that I, I think you'd get a kick out of if that's if you're planning to go for a big trip like the the Great Loop with one, um, and and you can make it into quite the elegant camper for one or two people. Uh, it would be it'd be a hoot. Again, like I said, roll a roll a little dirt bike in the front or a little, uh, you know, uh, street legal dirt bike and, uh, and, uh, you know, pack up some, pack up some gear and, uh, off you go. You could have a, you'd have a great trip. So anyway, the way I look at it. So anyway, um, so if you, if you're interested in this, uh, in this boat, uh, stop by my website, it's spireinternational.com and you can download free, uh, study prints for it. They're, they're full they're full size drawings that uh, that come with it. And they're PDFs, of course. You can just download them to your phone or, or your computer. And uh, it's got a bill of materials and it's got a spec sheet that tells you, uh, you know, how much load it'll carry and what horsepower you need, that, that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and, and the second page has, uh, you know, construction methods and um, and a bill of materials so you can figure out how much it's going to cost you. You know, I, I, I can, I cannot keep up with prices. They change so fast, you know, you know, wood and, and foam. And, you know, if somebody says, how much does it cost to build this? I, who knows? I have no idea. You know, just, just download the, the uh, bill of materials and start shopping and decide what you want, because I don't know if you want to use, you know, Primo hardwood or, or you're going to use uh you know, I've, I've had a lot of people build them out of junk from the from the dump. You know, a lot of a lot of people, especially in the Arctic, you know, they build a build it from old pallets. You know, they build some of my boats. So it's it, you know, I, I can't I can't guess what it's going to cost you in your part of the world. So you use that bill of materials, and then then you go shopping locally for the materials and stuff like that. So. Anyway, I have uh, stopped by the website. I've got 120, I think, boats now um, up on the site that you can download the free study prints for and, you know, check out all sorts of different uh, possibilities that you can make in your, in your driveway or garage, you know. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, so uh, you can get a hold of me anytime. Um, you can check out my Facebook page. Uh, it's under Spira Boats or... I have a builders group on Facebook. It's got about 30,000 people in it. It's called Boat Builders and Building, Boat Building and Builders, sorry, a group, um, which you're, you're welcome to join. And it's moderated and you can ask questions and all that stuff. Um, and then you can, you can send me messages as well on Facebook and I'll get right back to you. 
or you can email me at info at spirainternational.com or you can find me on Instagram as well under Spira Boats. So um, the info at spirainternational.com is listed on every page of my website. So that's the best email to get hold of me. Um, I have some other emails that you may be able to find or you may be connected to things, but please don't use those because it's, uh, I've got heavy duty uh, security on them because you know my day gig is cybersecurity consulting. So it, that keeps getting tougher and tougher and I may miss your email and may get sucked out of there. So anyway, um, info at spireinternational.com. I'll see it though. I'll see it the quickest. So. Uh, okay, well, um, the best way to, uh, to help me keep bringing these up, these videos, is to uh, like, share, and subscribe. So please do that, and, uh, and it'll keep, keep these coming. And uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you again. Bye now.